the Porsche Sport Podcast, powered by Porsche Centre Leeds. Test drive the new Porsche Taycan and experience soul electrified. Five, four, three, two, one, the podcast will start. The Porsche Sport Podcast, the only weekly podcast to bring you all the latest Porsche motorsport news and opinions. The Porsche Mobile One Super Cup, World Endurance Series, Le Mans 24 Hours, the IMSA WeatherTech Championship, Porsche Carrera Cup, the 24 Hour Series, SRO Championships, eSports and exclusive interviews. Make sure to subscribe on your chosen podcast platform. For more information and exclusive news, visit porschesport.com. Hello and welcome to a very special episode of the Porsche Sport Podcast because joining me today is Porsche factory driver and newly crowned Sebring 12-hour winner, Matteo Jaminet. Matteo, welcome to uh, the program. How are you today? Hi everyone. Hi Peter. Hi, great. Great. It's, it's good, to, it's good to, have, uh, to have you today and uh, give you some, um, some insight of Sebring. As you said, it was a great race for us. So... Uh, yeah, it was, was really cool and uh, I'm doing well. Fantastic. Well, first of all, congratulations on the big win with WeatherTech Racing at the Sebring 12 Hours, the fourth in a row for Porsche with the RSR. Uh, but you were the one behind the wheel when it all got very crazy at the end. Tell us about those final stages of, of the race from, from your driver's seat. Yeah, thank you. I mean, yeah, as you said, it was a kind of a crazy race. Um, as we know in Sebring, is is always uh, always special towards the end when it gets dark. I would say it's it's, it's always the case in Sebring, but also in uh, in Petit and Petit Le Mans. Also, when it gets dark in America, the the race the racing is going crazy. So uh, yeah, I was lucky to be behind the wheel to finish the race, and uh, yeah, we were we were definitely in the mix. Uh, but um, I'd say missing slightly a tenth or two uh, to really fight the, the Corvette and um, and the BMW in front. But uh, yeah, I mean, when the last yellow came out, we were like, okay, we are back in the game and, and everything can happen now. It's only only 18 or 19 minutes to go. So uh, let's let's go all in, go full risk. And if there is an opportunity, just take it. And uh, and yeah, we were at the right place at the, the right time, let's say. And uh, we've been a little bit lucky in... in in the situation and in the fights uh, between the BMW and the Corvette, but um, yeah, I could avoid the BMW coming back on track, and um, and yeah, and then I was fighting with him and could take the lead, and uh, and yeah, made it to the finish. So uh, definitely a very nice one for for myself, but also for the team and Porsche for fourth one in a row. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of crazy in GTLM, and um, and to win it as a as a private team also with the with the support of uh, Proton Racing, Wizard Tech Racing, and and as we know, with Cooper. So um, it was really a great achievement for, for everybody, definitely. It certainly was. It was certainly exciting for, for us to watch. You drank a lot of red wine for the nerves for the last hour for you. What's <laughs> 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 French red wine, though? I must say uh, that oh, important. Nice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us, I mean, how does the, uh, the 911 RSR handle on the grass at Sebring? Because you had to take a bit of a, a different route to avoid the BMW. Yeah, it was kind of uh, unexpected, and um, yeah, I basically just just was just a reflex move. I mean, I was not at that point. You cannot really re- really think of what you're gonna do. I mean, I, I didn't see the car coming, so it just kind of come across the track uh, in the other direction. So uh, the only option was to go left, and I went in the grass. And luckily, we 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 didn't touch uh on that one and um yeah i mean the rsr was doing great also in the grass <laughs> so uh as we know with the 911 it's a perfect car daily car and you can even drive in the grass now so um yeah i mean it was it was it was fun and crazy and uh, i really enjoyed it oh, i'm glad i mean you've, you've had a a decorated career you know you've won the carrera cup france the uh Peugeot RCZ Cup France, I saw uh, uh, as well, and, and lots of major endurance races. But where does this Sebring win rank for you in your career, for your personal opinion? How does it feel for you uh, in terms of your achievements? I mean, I 
don't know exactly to be honest where to place it uh but it's i mean it's definitely one of the top ones i mean i mean this is on the list i think of every every drivers in in endurance it's the second biggest race in america and uh, and definitely one of the one of the most um fun to to race on track because sebring is really special as a racetrack so uh, i mean this is definitely up there with my best uh, achievements um as I did before, and I think it's the nicest uh, endurance race I, I won so far. I didn't win much. Uh, I won a couple of championships, but not not a lot of big endurance racing so far. So um, I think it's definitely uh, definitely the best one on, on that. It, it seems to me, Matteo, that obviously you've, in the in the Porsche factory world, there's been some great pairings over the years. You see, uh, Romain Dumas and Timo Bernhard were a brilliant pairing. Uh, Errol and Lawrence, who you've you've obviously raced with as well, but I think you and Matt Campbell are the next big pairing. Is is that a a conscious decision from from you guys or from Porsche for you guys to work closely together in the car? Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, there've been some some strong pairings, and and one I was also thinking is uh, Michael Christensen and Kevin Est. They of course, how could I forget? Uh, yes, <laughs> big achievements, and I think they've, these guys have always been a great great example to follow. Um, mm. For myself, but also for Matt, uh, I, was, I was lucky to to work closely with uh, with Lawrence and Earl uh, in the last in the last years, and now we have Earl on board for for this season. And uh, and definitely, I think this is something we try to to create with Matt. I mean, first of all, we get along very well together uh, when we we started uh, sharing cars, and uh, not only on track but also off track. Mm. Uh, it's it's really it's really matching between us. So. Um, yeah, when when there were, there is talk uh, with Porsche, I think it you know, makes sense to to drive with someone you like and someone you 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 have a good connection with. So um, this is something we we try to 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 put in place, and this is something also I think the idea is, is shared by Porsche. Um, I don't know if we are the guys from the future. I hope so, and I hope we 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 will continue for for years together with Porsche and and. and um, and, and with Matt as a, as a strong pairing, but uh, at least for now it's it's working very well, and uh, we we really hope to have more success uh, in the next uh, in, in the next races, but also in the next seasons. Luckily, so we must say, Porsche, if you're listening, don't split them up. Don't <laughs> keep, them, keep, them, keep them together. Now, what, do you know when we might see you back in the WeatherTech car over in the US? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll be back uh, definitely. I think the next round is Watkins. Mm -hmm. uh, plan, uh, for the six hours so this is definitely planned to to be back and then i will be uh, sharing the car with with cooper on some sprint uh, rounds and we we're just splitting between uh, matt and myself mm -hmm. uh, as it's been announced i think we don't have many clashes with the Euro european program mm -hmm. so um so definitely for the endurance racing uh endurance races we will be back uh as a crew all three together and then for the sprint round we will we will swap with matt uh, to drive with together with cooper Oh, that would be fantastic. Have you driven at Watkins Glen before? No. <laughs> it it looks so much fun. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I got the, the chance to try last time the, the track on the sim. And mm. Matt is actually, Matt is a big fan of uh, Simulator and he's driving quite a lot on, on the sim. And uh, it starts to be a very uh, high rating um, eSport uh, driver. <laughs> so I got the chance to try Watkins Glen last time on his sim and it, it definitely looks uh, very fun and very fast. Um, so yeah, lo really looking forward to it. I mean, also the, the tracks during the season, uh, during spring rounds and so on. Uh, I don't, I don't know them, so it's going to be uh, new and uh, quite, a, quite, a, quite of a challenge. But uh, I mean, we are used to it to learn new tracks quickly, so it should be fine. And I'm really looking forward to the experience and uh, yeah, and get more experience in the American tracks. Do you do you have a sim at home to uh, to, to practice with? No, no, no. no. Don't. Ah, okay. You're, you're uh, like Kevin. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, yeah, I don't have one. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm living in a small uh, small apartment so far, very small, so I don't have the space to to have a to have a to have a sim. But it's planned to to actually buy one in the next month because I'm I'm, I'm moving to a new place which is bigger. So I I have a room for the sim. So uh, then I can join Matt join Matt on the sim and some other guys. I think I think it'll be fun. I, th I will. I will. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Now, taking things back a little bit, tell us about your journey with, with Porsche, because it's been obviously such a big part of your career as a racing driver. Tell us about your very first experience when you got behind the wheel of a, of a Porsche racing car. 
projects? Yes. Yeah, so um, to go back, it, it, it went back to the, I mean, the really first time was in 2013. Uh, I got a French Carrera Cup shootout to try to become the, the French Porsche Junior. But um, unfortunately, I wasn't I wasn't selected at that, that shootout. <laughs> so um, yeah, that was the really first experience. Was uh, back in the days the 997 Cup with still the the, the manual uh, lever yeah. shifting was the first time for me. So I struggled a bit at that at that selection, and uh, unfortunately, uh, they didn't take me. But let's say the really first test and the really first time I got really to try the car was in April um, 2015 for the official test of the French Carrera Cup with my first year of the, of the French Korea Cup, which a deal which came up uh, just six, seven days before the first, the first, this first test and two weeks before the first race. And um, was uh, yeah, kind of kind of special because in 2014, unfortunately, I couldn't couldn't drive and couldn't run uh, due to sponsors and, and money. So I had to, to, to stop for a year, a year and a half. So uh, and yeah, to get back to racing and straight in the cup was wasn't so easy to, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> but uh, in the end, it, it worked out because that year um, I did a quite good season and I got the chance to go to the, the Porsche shootout in 2015 directly in my first year, and uh, I became a Porsche junior at the end of that year. So it went actually pretty quick from no racing and being at university to straight to Porsche junior in uh, six months time, six seven months. So uh, it went pretty fast and, uh, and then it never stopped to move up in the Porsche pyramid and, uh, and the trust uh, that Porsche placed into me. And uh, so, so far it, it's working well. And w- when, was the, uh, when was the phone call to say you were getting the, as they say, the white suit to become the full factory driver? Um, yeah, I think I got some meetings uh, back in 2019. Um, at that at that time, I was a Porsche young professional for the third year in the, in a row. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, at the end of 2018, I was really hoping to make the step because uh, it was a very successful year for myself and Porsche. We won the ADAC GT Masters, so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was really trying to to get the deal done at that time. But unfortunately, it wasn't wasn't the right time, um, so we, we couldn't do it. But uh, yeah, in 2019, um, yeah, we had a good season again and. Um, there was some talks. I cannot remember exactly the time where 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 we where we decided and where I got the call. But uh, obviously, towards the end of the year, and um, and yeah, for sure was was finally the the final step for me. Uh, so yeah, it was a uh, was a really a really good. I'm uh, not a good surprise, but really really nice. Uh, let's say present for all the hard work from the previous years, and um, and that was really yeah super happy and still super happy about my position at the moment. And uh, I hope it's going to stay like this for <laughs> for the next years. I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so. And of course, as part of your your job as a, a Porsche factory driver, you get to go all over the world racing for different teams, like obviously WeatherTech, GPX, but also with, with Fricadelli uh, at, at the Nürburgring. And you've already raced with them a few times. Now, uh, obviously, Fricadelli had some very sad news uh, a few weeks ago with Sabina Schmitz uh, uh, sadly passing away. I mean, just tell our, as a someone who's driven for the team, tell us what the spirit of this team is like and and what it's what what their attitude is like about going racing. Yeah, I mean, Fricadelli is maybe not well known, let's say, in the motorsport world, but in in the notch life. And for the 24 hours Nürburgring, they are kind of a legend. I mean, yeah. it's the fast meatball, as we say. And um, and yeah, I mean, the team has a, has a really special spirit, which was which was uh, bring by uh, obviously Sabine, but also Klaus Abelen, which mm-hmm. is the, the owner of the team, and which is doing this for by passion. And um, mm-hmm. which, yeah, I mean, it's more than an hobby. I mean, they leave they leave for motorsport and they leave for the green hell. Basically, so um, it's really a special atmosphere because you know you you're racing hard and you're racing the toughest track in the world and uh, against the toughest competition and against manufacturers and and uh, some uh, factory cars and so on and they do fully I mean it's a fully private entry and um, obviously with the support of Porsche on driver's side but uh, yeah it's a private entry and uh, they try to do the good job but it's also in the end a very a uh, small team and uh, it's like a big family you know it's the Fricadelli family and in the evening everybody gets back together to have a beer a fru, a fru 
like on yeah, the car, yeah, uh, yeah. which is the the sponsor and the, which you can find everywhere in in, in the truck or <laughs> or in the box or whatever. You you can always get beers and meatballs, and, and this <laughs> really, I mean, this is really cool. And um, I think every driver which had the chance to to race for Frika Deli uh, got uh, unbelievable memories from. Um, from Klaus and Sabine and from the atmosphere from the guys because in the end we are racing hard in the day but in the evening we are all, all there like uh, like we could be with our friends at home or with our family just enjoying a nice dinner a nice steak and having a beer and just speak about everything in life and, and this is this is kind of cool for a driver that that sounds incredibly special um it's, uh, it sounds very special indeed and of course this year, the Nürburgring 24-hour, I think, is going to be the most competitive running of the race ever with so many cars from so many factories, as you said. But Frikadeli, I think, have the strongest ve- strongest entry they've ever had. Now, two cars, uh, which you, you're going to be in one of them alongside uh, Matt, of course, and Earl Bamber. It's a heck of a strong lineup, very strong lineup. How important is that race for you personally in your busy calendar in 2021? I mean... Uh, as you said, it's the, by far the biggest entry from Fricadelli ever, or the, mm-hmm. the, the strongest one they ever had. Uh, I mean, it's clear that uh, with the with the drivers we have on board, and I mean the the, the effort is, is which is put by Klaus and, and team, it's clear that um, we're going to fight for for top positions. Um, so it's it's really great to be back and 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 get a I hope a really good chance to fight for the win. I mean. Obviously, for, for myself and Porsche, um, 24 hours never win is always a top priority race every year on the calendar. I mean, this is this is clear that with Le Mans, uh, also Daytona and, and, and Spa, uh, of course, but like Nürburgring is their home race for the team, but for the brand. Uh, so, 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 yeah, it's, it's a really big race. But beside this, it's also for me the most special one of the calendar because the track is unique. Um, the fans are also unique. It's, it's <laughs> the atmosphere out there, and um, and yeah, racing at night in the Norge life in the in the rain like last year, whatever you can you can not get this this kind of feeling and 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 anywhere else in the world because it's the toughest race by far by far on the on the mechanical side, but also on the driver's side because you need to be really complete as a driver and as a team and don't make any mistakes and there is no safety cars, there is nothing. So it's just, just up to your speed. Yeah. So you, there is, it's kind of, a, it's not a 24 hours. Now it's really a sprint race for 24 hours. And uh, in this kind of conditions and this kind of track, uh, I really respect the winning, the winning uh, crew and the winning cars every year and the winning teams because we, we speak a lot about Le Mans and as a, as a French driver, Le Mans is really special. And for me, it's, it's for sure target number one and it's the biggest one, but mm-hmm. definitely the hardest one, I think, to win. And the, the most, I mean, the I think maybe should be the nicer one on your CV is definitely the, the, the Nürburgring 24 because it's, it's incredible, really yeah. incredible. I, I, I to- totally agree with you. I mean, it's, it boggles my mind that we, you have you guys like yourself and Matt and Earl and Kevin in a full factory GT3 car. And then you have a guy in a diesel BMW and then somebody in a Renault Clio and you're having to make your way through them. It's like driving through rush hour traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, yeah, I forgot to talk about the traffic, but I mean, beside the track, which is already the, the, the toughest challenge, you get yeah, as you said, maybe traffic and with very small cars and amateurs which just enjoy racing and and come there for fun. And then in between this, you have just uh, how they how, as they look at us, the crazy GT3 guys just going through traffic and taking maximum risk to to gain a couple of tenths here and there or, or seconds. And um, yeah, that's what makes the race uh, really special. And I really hope that we it will stay like this. Obviously, it's a little bit dangerous, but. Uh, I hope that the track will stay like it is also and that we will always uh, compete on the on the North Shrive and that we will not lose this tradition. I, I agree with you. I, I think the, 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 uh, the cars are always getting more and more safe, I suppose, with the, and the, the safety equipment. And I think as long as you keep improving those things, then you can continue to race somewhere like the... Uh, the north side I, I agree with you um looking looking ahead i mean what are you've you've been with porsche for a while now what are your kind of long-term goals with with porsche what would you like to achieve with them 
I mean, all my all my uh, target races, I think, which are which are the same for them. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, uh, I mean, obviously, um, the the top uh, twenty four hours races uh, races are on, on the top list. I think for every driver and every brand. But uh, I mean, we know that uh, Porsche has a really big history in Le Mans. Mm. Uh, the biggest one and the, the greatest one. Uh, so I, I'd like love to to compete in in Le Mans again with Porsche, and then and win it, and and and, and yeah, and bring another another win uh, back in in Weissar and and Flacht. And for sure, this is this is um, this is my dream. But also ra- racing like Daytona overall and um, and Spa and Nurburgring are the four. The four big ones, and then on the side, if you can win always championships, because these races are always part of championships. So if you can also bring the title at the end of the year, this is really the, really, really the target and and really the dream. I have absolutely. I mean, of course, most of the most of the career and and still is is focused around GT cars. Do would you ever have an ambition to to go into to prototypes? Of course, with Porsche. Two years time, we'll have a, a shiny new prototype to to play with. Is is that in your thinking, or are you focused on on GT? Yeah, I mean, with with what's happening right now in in motorsport with this uh, with this LMH and LMDH coming, uh, mm-hmm. I think all drivers are thinking about <laughs> that because this is this is the opportunity. Maybe you get only one time in your life mm-hmm. uh, to race the top class and um, and looking at at what's going to be on the grid with the other brands and and drivers. Uh, it's really, really the dream. This is really the dream and definitely the target to try to achieve. Um, I have no idea if I'll get the chance to, to go for it, but I try to at least um, uh, work for it and uh, try, to, try to, to get some experience in prototype. I was supposed to do Daytona in prototype, unfortunately it didn't, didn't work out with a positive uh, COVID-19 test. Uh, but yeah, I try to, to to get some experience uh, this year, Ob- uh, obviously I have a very busy calendar, so it's difficult to find some dates to, to try to race or test um, LMP cars. But uh, yeah, that's definitely a target, and and I hope to to be part of it in the future of this LMDH um, or LMH uh, future. It's looking great. So it's looking very exciting. That's 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 for sure. Super exciting. We we I think we will never see so many brands fighting at Le Mans and for top top races. So. Uh, it would be a shame to 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 miss it, but uh, in the other end, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. So uh, you have to stay focused on on what you're gonna do. And if it stays in GT, there is still uh, I think will be some very nice racing in GT and still top races to win. So um, let's see what the future brings. I don't think you'll ever get bored either way. <laughs> I hope not. I hope uh, not. <laughs> no. Um, now, of course, as a as a Porsche factory driver, um, we 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 spoke to we had Kevin Estra on the show a few months ago, and he was telling us about what he gets up to in his company car in the uh, Turbo S. Do you, now, first of all, what uh, what company car is it that that you have at the moment? So currently, I got a nine eleven nine eight two Carrera S. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is my daily car and uh, super happy with it. I mean, I got it last year in July and um, I got already 30, almost 35,000 kilometers on it. And uh, and uh, I mean, it's a great car. I'm, I was surprised it's the first time I, I got the chance to to receive a 911. Um, and uh, yeah, super, super, super great car. And uh, definitely if, uh, if I can still choose uh, in the future again, I definitely go again for a 911 because it's just amazing. It's like a, a Swiss knife, as we say. You know, it can be quick on the racetrack. It's comfortable on the highway. It works in the city. Uh, you can put some luggage. So what else? <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, very jealous uh, of you as well. Uh, do you know when, when will you have an, another one soon or...? or uh... Um, I should keep, I should keep that one for the rest of the year. Uh, mm-hmm. so if I change it, it should be for, uh, start of 2022. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't know still what, uh, what will be the options or, or whatever. Diffic- difficult to say now, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, I'll keep at least this one until, until December. I, I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun with it. Would, now, would would you think that uh, someone would want uh, Matteo Jaminet's second-hand car? Will there be any brake pads left? 
<laughs> I don't know, but uh, actually, I tried to um, to get the car. <laughs> uh, this one, I'd like to to to. Uh, I'm, I'm looking maybe to to buy that one. Uh, oh, cool! So uh, yeah, maybe maybe the, someone doesn't doesn't have to suffer from uh, <laughs> from my car afterwards. <laughs> That's very That's very like noble. This, but, but I mean, so far it's in really good shape, and uh, I never, I never, I only did. Um, one time, a couple of laps of Notch Life with it, just to see. Uh, last year on the Nürburgring weekend in GT World Challenge, we were we were bored and with Matt and, and Patrick Pile, oh, and gosh. we said, "Oh, what to do? We finished pretty early the day, and the Notch Life was open. We said, should we go on the Notch Life?' So uh, we, we put in some laps on the Notch Life, but uh, besides this, the car is in is in really really nice shape, and uh, I mean it's really perfect. So maybe I, I might I might buy it." Uh, at the end of the year, for myself, <laughs> would be a nice one to keep after doing that with it. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I really, I really fall in love with the car, so um, that's why I try to keep it. Fantastic. I love it. Well, it's uh, Matteo. It's time for our final question, which we call the Racing Genie, and we ask this question to all of our guests, and basically, it's like a, uh, it's like a fantasy question. So you get to choose any race you like to do it with any car and with any teammate. So we, uh, for example, Michael Christensen, he chose Le Mans with the Rothmans 962 with Derek Bell as his teammate. Mm -hmm. uh, Cooper, Cooper was funny. He was Ayrton Senna, a 1980s Formula One car at Fuji. Okay. So you have the, like a combination. Uh, 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 Earl Bamber was the Daytona 500 in a NASCAR with uh, Dale Earnhardt. So this is Errol. Uh, yeah, that's cool. That's kind of cool. Um, so what would you choose? Um, huh, that's a tough one. I'd say as a teammate, I already know, I'd take uh, Beloff. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, because I really would like to see the, the talent and uh, only heard uh, great stories about him and, and great mm -hmm. things so it would be really interesting to to see so I'd take Beloff and the track and car I'd go uh, I'd go with my favorite car so the GT1 oh yes the so McNish car yes yes yeah <laughs> I'd go so Beloff GT1 and the track uh uh, I do this in uh, we have to go. I think I'd go on North Life. Yeah. I think I'd go on the North Life because it's it's the favorite track. I'd go North Life on Macau. I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh Stefan Beloff at Macau. Oh my <laughs> <laughs> I I tried to, to do something crazy. Wow, I can imagine the GT1, this car at the North Life uh, would be very fast yeah quick i, I believe I, I believe it it would be really quick and uh yeah with stefan Belov as a teammate and uh on the north Life or or in macau i'm sure it would be great fun <laughs> maybe maybe you can ask pascal if they can pull the gt1 out of the museum for a few laps for you <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll send him the the, the interview and then yeah <laughs> I thought, him just go straight to the last question do you think we can get a gt1 out of the museum for, for some laps on the notch <laughs> i'm not sure I, we'll give a we, we receive a positive answer but at least we can try <laughs> you can try you never know he might surprise you he might surprise you well mateo it's been an absolute pleasure to to have you on the the porsche sport podcast thank you for for making the time and uh, we wish you all the very best for the busy season that you have ahead Thank you. Thank you very much for, for, for asking me for, for the interview and it was really a pleasure to be, to be with you guys. So uh, thanks a lot and hopefully we can have a great one this year. The Porsche Sport Podcast, powered by Porsche Centre Leeds. Test drive the new Porsche Taycan and experience soul electrifying.